guys. Stream is starting up here now. Let me make sure I'm muted. Looking good. Hopefully sounding good. How y'all doing out there today? Let me make sure I'm getting music coming in. So, can you guys uh, hear me out there in in chat land? Yep, apparently it's coming through. If it sounds really faint, let me know. I can toggle some thingamabobbers. <laughs> Maybe get it so it's picking up better audio. I don't know. But uh, either way, how is everyone doing out there? Jared, how are you today, my friend? Good to see you. Let me move this aside here, and we'll get started. Okay, good, good. Glad to hear it. I'm never sure if it's if it's working right or not. I just have to trust. And uh, unfortunately, I don't trust the internets that much. <laughs> oh, boy. I've been good, man. I've been running all over the place today. Going to sharpen my pencil here with my broken sharpener. I've been running errands and getting stuff and out at South Hills. But picked up some goodies today, which has been exciting. I'm excited for that. Um, but yeah, things have been going well. Another Thursday and it was crazy raining today. Mm. But luckily no windows flew open and nothing broke. So let me get my Bristol board out and we'll get crack a lacking. Nothing like a new pad, a Bristol board. Mm, so fresh. Feels so good. I love it. And then my temp player. I never leave it in a place where I can easily get it. Always gets hidden away. Where'd you go, little temp player? That's, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea where it went, but that's okay. I thought today would be a good day to get some marker stuff done for upcoming shows. Not this weekend, but next weekend. I got to fill up my coffers pretty good. So uh, I thought it might be kind of fun to draw some, I don't know, monsters or cartoons or something of that nature would be. Uh, exciting so if you guys have any suggestions throw them out there and let me know but I was thinking we could do like we could do Freddy we could do Universal Monsters we could do cartoons we could do like He-Man or you know something like that hi Superman AK907 how are you today thanks for joining in Now I'm just looking for my little template so I can mask this real easy. I have no idea where it went. Great. You know, that's all right. We'll do this old school. Measure it out. Yeah, so something fun for you guys. Universal Monsters, horror movies cartoons whatever you guys want uh we'll we'll do it and it'll be 10 kinds of awesome not nine ten it's gonna be good stuff as you can maybe see here my ruler i'll show you better here in a second is uh completely wrecked like just i don't know if you guys can see that but it's so, and you can barely read the little ticks on it. They're so faded. 
Lakota, how you doing? Good to see you. Oh, no worries. No worries. We're pretty easy going here. You know, come in when you want. Not a big deal. And no need to apologize. I guess is what I'm saying. But good to have you on. How you been? Yeah, I think that's three quarters of an inch. I can barely tell what three quarters of an inch is with this. All right. So this will be the center line that we'll cut. And then it's an inch and a quarter down from each side. So inch and a quarter and inch and I can barely see in a quarter. You know what? Might as well just knock this out while we're here. Boom. Switch over to the other side. One thing I've always found when measuring is go from a consistent side. So like when I'm measuring my inch and a quarter, I always make sure that the, the strong um, inch line is on this side. So here and here, because every so often you'll get a piece of paper that's cut wonky and uh, it's real weird and it just, it just does not work. Okay. Inch and a quarter. I think that's inch and a quarter. Then we can do this across the top, just light and same with here. Crypt keeper sold <laughs> yes we can do the crypt keeper that sounds like fun that'll be a good one like i said i'm looking to get some stuff done for shows so that that i think would go well uh i made that an inch and a half there is quarter right there you know what yeah i i have one i i never throw anything out i'm like a flipping hoarder i swear to it but um, I have one, and you know what? You you say that I realize it's literally sitting here beside me on the desk. It was I didn't even have to move. I just I don't know why I turned around and grabbed this one. You know how sometimes like your brain just I don't know. This happens to me, but like I'll be sitting on the couch and the remote controls like inches away from my head sitting on like the end table or something or, or on the, the ottoman and i'll be to my wife i'll be like hey have you seen the remote anywhere you know one time i was looking for a book on my shelf and i apparently had found it and pulled it out and put it in my hand and <laughs> something distracted me i don't know i get distracted all the time something distracted me right so I then go back to looking for that same book and I'm looking all over my shelf and I'm thinking, man, I know I have this book. I, I know I have it. Where is it? And it just the whole time for like a minute, it was in my, it was in my flipping hand. I was holding it. It's ridiculous. So what happens, I guess, when you get older? All right, there we go. We got two marker drawings. Bangarang right there, boom, ready to rock and roll. And uh, we're doing the Crypt Keeper, so let's get into it. Let me see if the music bot's still working. I don't know if it is or not. Let's try another music bot. I hope it's no ads. There we go. If the music's too loud, let me know. Let me tape this down. So, Lakota, what kind of art are you working on? Anything exciting or fun or, you know, otherwise noteworthy? Jared, exactly. Exactly. It's... Hold on one second. It's like you, uh... It's like you just forget that those things exist in your life or something. I don't know. But yeah, that, that same thing. Okay. Boom. My brother giving me a call. But I'm not going to pick it up here. Let me turn this down a pinch. 
and get the paper squared away. That should look good. Let me see. I'll zoom it in just a tidbit. With um, OBS here, I find that when I zoom in too much, it gets like blurry and grainy. That'll work. I think that'll look good. Not, not too blurry. Let's tape it down and get a crack in. So I think I'm going to do just a, a pretty, how should I put this? Like a bog standard Crypt Keeper. You know, I know he dresses up in different outfits and that's fun. But uh, I think just a standard regular old Crypt Keeper here. Maybe with some cool stuff around him would be pretty sweet. So I'm going to get up a little bit of photo reference here so I know what he looks like. I generally have the idea of that, that taper-jawed skeleton. Yeah, I used to have Tales from the Crypt trading cards when I was but a wee youngin. <laughs> I was like, I always liked that show. I thought it was really cool. I remember the cartoon show. It was pretty sweet. All sorts of good stuff. Okay. Let's get cracking. Oh, that's awesome, Lakota. Very cool. And I'm just not sure what I'm going to do here. So I'm just kind of getting a nice the gist tales from the crypt so good okay He's holding up, how about we have him holding up the book here, the Tales from the Crypt book. And you know what, I think I'm going to zoom it out just to, just a wee bit. So let's get this erased here. Just a bit. That head was a little bigger than I wanted it to be. There we go. That's that's a little more like it, I think. Look at that goofy smile. Aw, oh, what a cute face. The eyes. Great show. Great animatronic, too. I might even go so far as to say that the Crypt Keeper might have been the last great horror movie animatronic. Because around the time the Tales from the Crypt was on and then stopped being on, it seemed like everything went to CG. And I know they've had costumes and puppets for other movies since The Crypt Keeper, but in terms of a whole, like, franchise, I don't know. I think he might be the last one, guys. Uh, Lakota, this is a dust brush. This is just by Statler. They make all kind of art supplies. And um, there's not really too much special with it. The hairs are somewhat coarse. I'd say they're like a medium coarseness, and there's a good lot of them. And uh, it just gets all the eraser dust out without you having to, you know, smear your drawing like that. It's uh, generally really great for when I'm doing, like, pure pencil work. 
because that smears and smudges so easily and this prevents that so you get your dust off but yeah it's a good time i would highly recommend something like that uh for doing pencil drawings especially for people that are are more painters or more uh you know uh, watercolors or even pure marker people that tend, don't tend to draw with pencil and erase a lot it's not necessary but i i love it for pencil stuff it is a must okay let's get this face going there I love, too, a skeleton like the Crypt Keeper, where he's not just a skull. He's, like, juicy. I don't know. <laughs> he's got all those delicious fleshy bits on him, which is a lot of fun. I think he's going to be a blast to draw here. just so long as I get all the teeth right. Good times. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Good for pencil work. That's, that's a definite. I love all the little like random art supply things like that that you can get. I know people use they their smudge guards for pencil work that it's like a it's like a half glove like it goes on like this finger and around here so that if you put your hand down it's not gonna they don't smudge or whatever but I don't know anybody that really uses that too much to, to get reviews or anything but uh, I really want an electric eraser I think that'll be a blast to play with All right, how am I feeling about this face? I don't know. My eraser too is flew the coop, I think. It's right here, but it like busted at the tip. I can't eject it anymore. And I don't think I have any more uh, refills. I have to stop and get some. I erase a lot is all I'm saying. at those friendly crypt keeper eyes i know like people people say like they swear by them they're like oh it's great uh i just i don't know i don't know anybody personally that's ever that's ever used one for me to be like yes i'm getting one plus i got these big old meat mallets here so i'm hoping that i find one that fits i bet they stretch Yeah, it's sad having big hands, you know. I can't use the Nintendo Power Glove at all. It sucks. It just doesn't fit. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> such is life. And the Crypt Keeper is about 12 shades of brown. So let's work in that. And with that hair, oh, that hair, luscious. Those luscious locks. But yeah, I love like random art supplies and all kind of stuff. Having weird things, having interesting things. I wonder if there's like an art supply podcast I can listen to. That sounds great. Where people review art supplies. Yeah. All right. So the Crypt Keeper's hair goes all kind of crazy over here. And yeah, da, da, da. that's okay. Let's get this book in. The 
Tales from the Crypt book. I love it too because like in every episode he opens this big thick gross looking book and then it's a Tales from the Crypt like comic book inside of there. That's so cool. Good old Crypt Keeper. All right, so we're going to get his decaying little fingers in. I think that's going to work well. And I'm not worried too much about the um, making that anatomy perfect. I, I think it'll I think it'll work in the context of the drawing. Big gross book. So good. Okay, there we go. And then we'll add some, the cover's just like ripped and rotten, I think. Shading right to left. Yeah, that happens. That happens. That would definitely be smudge central if that occurs. So yeah, definitely go for the glove, man. Get the glove. It It's so bad. And then we'll put his chair behind him. Over here. Let's do that. And the chair's got like the spiky bits on it. There we go. And... They have a little skull on them here, too. Ba -ba -ba. There we go. That'll work. And then we can just make the background colors just some fun, interesting, you know, I know that the uh, chair is wider than this, but I think it's going to look good in the drawing this way to have the other side of it there. Good deal. Good deal. Okay. And I wonder... I wonder if the, because the, this is a big little bit of, of negative space I don't like right there. So I'm wondering if it would be good to have his other hand. His other hand in there. Like he's kind of grasping the book, you know. Almost like reverently. What do you guys think about that? Adding in that extra hand there. And then one of these has to get smaller I want to say it's these fingers they're really big considering they're skeletal so shrink these or increase these what do you guys what do you guys think you be the judge all right let me move some of this stuff out of the way here and I will get the marker case up and we'll get rolling on that. And by the way, I need to real quick change the title here.
crypt. Okay, there we go. That's adjusted in the YouTubes. Let me do it in the Twitches. Done. Perfect. Drawing the Crypt Keeper. Up there for all to see. Shrink the left ones on top. Yeah, that's that's where I was thinking too. So that's that works. Being that they're skeletal, they should definitely be a little on the smaller side. But I know that this, since he's kind of holding the book out a little bit, it should be bigger. So. They're not exactly skeletal hands. They're they're like desiccated. So they still have a little bit of meat here and there. That ought to work. All right. Let's get to marker ring. Let me move all of my crap. Just so much stuff. Oh, the sound of sweet, sweet markers. Here we go. I think with old Crypty here, I'm gonna have the light coming from kind of the front like this way. So what I'm gonna do is take some of these browns and just get the darkest parts on that side of his head. Eyes there, one of the nose. Perfection. And then same with these, the fingers here. Just the undersides, those really dark areas. Tales from the crypt. So good, man. Do you guys, do you guys remember watching this show when it was on? We didn't have HBO, but uh, we had like occasionally they'd have reruns on Sci-Fi Channel and and other places. But I very much remember, like, you can't do this now. You can't do this now. But back in the day, you could like watch HBO or Cinemax or Showtime or whatever it was. Uh, through the scramble like the channel would come in scrambled but you could still like kind of catch a peek of it you know and that was always like you try to watch it and you could hear it generally fine i remember that man so yeah whatever you tune into whatever channel on the tv hbo was supposed to be and it would be all distorted, but yeah, you could like kind of, sort of, maybe watch it a little bit. <laughs> oh, man. Good times. Yeah, that and uh, if you were lucky late at night on like a Friday or something, you'd have like Cinemax showing like dirty movies. <laughs> I always remember trying to stay up late. Man, the things we used to do before the internet, right? <clears throat> I know, right? <laughs> now you just have the DVDs. Like any show you want, is it's there. And it's like, boom, it's here for you. Absolutely 
maybe not free, but so accessible, so easily accessible. It's amazing. I love it. Fill in again some of these shadows. This is Ash Rose I'm using. It's one of my favorite colors. I recently got a, a refill for it. It's great for doing these kind of like browns here. And honestly, with the Crypt Keeper, I'm going right over top of the pencil. Because um, I don't really care. The Crypt Keeper is such a dirty, gross looking dude. That I think it's just going to... All those little errant pencil lines... I think it's going to enhance rather than um, detract from the drawing. Like if you're trying to draw Pac-Man, who's that bright yellow and he's very clean, you're going to really want to watch the pencil lines. But here on the Crypt Keeper, nah. And we'll get these out of the there though. <laughs> Ant on VHS, nice. Love recording on VHS. I still have some of my old shows like uh, Mighty Max. The cartoon was never put on DVD. I've got uh, most of the episodes saved I, on VHS. I used to record them after school. That's awesome. I've been, I've been really wanting to get the DVDs of the show. I haven't because there's some really... Uh, good ones there's ones that I really like that you know maybe they're not the best episode but I just have good memories of like that one where John Stamos was he had to like kill some lady out in the field and it was this whole like occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge type deal you know maybe not the best episode but uh, I, I have fond memories The one where the, uh, oh man, it's, he's like a lumberjack and he just wants to do his lumberjack and good, but the lumberjack boss's wife is this total, like, I don't know. She's trouble, right? And she gets this guy into trouble and yeah. Yeah. I won't spoil it cause all of these great twist endings and stuff, but I love that one. That's a good one. <laughs> Okay, I am going to go in now with this soft sun and I'm going to hit some of the brighter areas here and this is going to be toned down later, but I think it'll be good to establish some of the bright areas or brighter areas. And then when you go over it, it's going to give a good look, I think cheeks tips of the ear here chin jaw even on the tops of the fingers so what are you guys favorite episodes yeah 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 you're jared you're absolutely right forgot about that <laughs> it was mrs peacock from clue yeah i don't know i just i like that episode i don't know why it just it's it's probably not because of it it as an episode but my memories as a kid you know and i think that's so important i know nostalgia is some people have problems with it some people think it's great some people think it's it's bad for you but yeah whatever i don't know I like it. I like taking my trips down memory lane. There we go. Just getting these nice dark colors in here. And he's just starting to take more shape, which I like. All the 
these wrinkly bits. Tales. I can't get that out of my head. I just keep hearing him say it. Tales from the crypt. Yeah! <laughs> and, the, and the slime pours down. Oh, man. So good. So what are some other ones that you guys like? I'll start throwing them out there. Do you guys remember the one where Danny... I think it was Danny DeVito... And he was super, like, he wanted to marry, oh, this thing is overflowing. He wanted to marry some chicks with money, and he found a girl, like, she inherited money, but she was a twin, and he was greedy as hell, so he wanted both the sisters' money, so he pretended to be a twin, you know? He pretended to be a twin, and... They didn't like that when they found out. Again, I won't spoil the ending, but uh, it's a good one. Lakota, the one where he's buried of his neck, high tide, comes back from the dead. I don't remember that. Is that, is that, was that a Tales from the Crypt or was that, that a portion of Creep Show with uh, Ted Danson in it? If they made a Tales from the Crypt episode of something like that, I don't, I don't recall, but. Either way, if you're talking about the Creep Show one, that's a good pick because that's a great, that is an absolutely fantastic section of that movie. And a great little horror story. I love it. And Jared, Harry Anderson. Yeah. That is a good one. Okay, add in some of this. This is called Deep Orange here. Some added colors in there, I think, is going to be good. Oranges, reds, a lot of earth tones. Just feel like the more colors, the better. And I'm not really focused on this is where the light's coming from. I'm almost just kind of like feeling it out, you know, like I feel like this color should go here. Uh, there's no real conscious for me right now, like, uh, oh yeah, the light's here. I mean, a little bit of that, but with doing this kind of stuff, it's just throwing it in and, and going for broke. Still, that is a good one because Creep Show is another favorite of mine. I love uh, anthology stuff. Love anthology stuff. And uh, Creep Show is like maybe one of the best horror anthology movies ever made. Yeah, I love stuff like Creep Show, Tales from the Crypt, The Outer Limits, Twilight Zone, of course. Um,. Oh, God, there's so many. Yeah, Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Thriller with Boris Karloff is a good one. The Revival series of Outer Limits and Tales from the Crypt. and There's, there, there's just so many shows like that. And uh, it's just so cool. I love it because you get just a little, this like little sweet dose and it doesn't overstay its welcome. And it's in a format where, unlike a million-dollar movie or, you know, a $50 million movie, it's not like a studio has to put all its uh, financial eggs into this basket. It's like, hey, we can make a cool story. It's not super expensive. If it's not the biggest blockbuster in the world, like, hey, you know, we'll, we'll just do it again next week. See what works, you know? Pink is a little too pink, but you know what? It's in there now. Nothing I could do about it. That's okay. I was looking for like a really, really light color. I might have to go with this yellow red quad zero silk. That works. 
And I can kind of blend all this together a little bit better. That's coming along there. That's that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Jared, really? And yes, Leslie Nielsen for the win. Love me some Leslie Nielsen. I just watched Forbidden Planet again a couple days ago. Probably one of my top like 20 movies just in general. Love him in that. But uh, anyway... Jordan Peele is rebooting the Twilight Zone. Interesting. I'd be interested to watch that. Again, because you just have the name The Twilight Zone. It's it's not like there's much that you can screw up with it. It's just an anthology horror series, you know? <clears throat> I'd definitely be interested in watching that. Lakota, nice choice, watching it on Netflix. I wish they had the uh, Outer Limits on Netflix, you know? I like them both. But uh, Twilight Zone is so good. One of the all-time greats. I don't know if anybody remembers this show, but it was uh, hosted by Henry Rollins, and it's called Night Visions. And uh, I remember watching it a lot as a kid. I, I think it was only on for like one or two seasons, like nothing, nothing major, but... Uh, I remember that show, and I don't think it's out on, on DVD or VHS or, or any. It might be on VHS, but I don't think it's on DVD or any, any place like that. I was watching them on YouTube a while back, and uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. Just stuff like that. Just I remember it from being a kid. It's always good to watch. Okay. There's uh if you have Amazon Prime, you can watch the show Monsters. It's another one I, I remember the opening. Monsters is uh and again with these, your mileage may vary, but a lot of this is nostalgia for me. So at, if you're gonna watch Monsters at or if you're not gonna watch Monsters, I get it. I totally do, but at least watch the beginning. Like, the opening credits of Monsters is so good. Alright, get these a little blacker in here. And this color is Pecan. Delicious. some other good anthology shows i watched um masters of horror when it was on there were some good episodes of that some i still really like to this day the uh takashi Mike one that they didn't even air because it was too extreme so good hi i found sphinx how you doing today welcome to the stream Uh, and then what was the one, it was like the, the year after they canceled Masters of Horror, there was one on ABC, a show. And I can't remember, and I watched that when it was on, and the stories were not that great, man. I can't, I can't remember what that was called. But uh, I was less than thrilled with it. But you know what? That's, it's fine. It's all good. Dark's a little darker. Now the Crypt Keeper has like bright blue eyes, so we're gonna give it a try. 
I have seen uh, a decent amount of Ray Bradbury theater, but Roald Dahl's Tales of the Unexpected. I, I don't know if I've heard of that one. That's cool. I will check that out. Let's try some of this pale sepia here. That's a little more yellow than I want. That's okay. Gotta keep with these browns. We'll go with this brick beige. See what that does. See what it looks like. Oh, that's good. I like that. I like that brick beige. That's good in there. I like just making some dots here and there. Just giving them some, some texture, you know. That's sweet. Okay, and then we can go over it again with the yellow red silk and kind of just a little extra blending. white areas tales of the unexpected rolled doll who wrote like charlie and the chocolate factory and the bfg a little darker than uh, you'd think if you actually look into it well thank you lakota much much obliged all right we're gonna leave the hair pretty white on old crippy here uh, but his shoulders here are going to taper down. So we're going to need to fill in this little region here with some skin tone for him. And that's going to be pretty dark as it is, as it's in shadow. See the little area for reflected light just on the chin there. And start throwing that in. some of this ash rose scrubbing in there I'm gonna do this milky white here as the little reflected color help to define the areas and that's where you know the the chins in shadow if if like you can imagine that this is the chin here the lights coming down and hits the neck and bounces up into that chin area and that lightens that area so that's kind of what that little dab is there not perfect or anything but uh it helps to define the regions a little more little wrinkly bits here and there that's good that works more than enough more than enough okay what's next what do I want to do Crypt Keeper wears red robes let's start putting that in I'm gonna use Cardinal to start we're gonna leave some regions there light on top where the edge of the robe is good gotta leave those areas for his hair to come down there we go I like that that's good some regions here where there's missing strands that's good at least good enough for now you know that's that's my motto when I'm drawing good enough for now and then I'm gonna go in with the dark red 
just a couple areas. The more colors we can kind of layer on here, I think the better it's going to look. Older, mustier. Just kind of feather it up. Nice and nice and easy. And then uh, I'm going to do... Rose red here. A little more pink than I like, but we're going to go over it with some gray. We're going to use a warm gray three, I think. Favorite color red, word up. I would say that my favorite color when I was a kid was red, and also my favorite Ninja Turtle had a red bandana. And which shade did you like specifically, or is it just the whole combo here? I used Cardinal and Dark Red. I think they work well together. I don't know if the camera's picking up the difference between the two caps there. Actually, it looks like Cardinal's the darker one, but Dark Red's pretty dark. Okay, dokay. Hold on one second. Hey, man. Nothing much. Hey, I'm streaming right now. Can I call you back? Oh, no, you're fine, man. I will talk to you later. Bye. Sorry about that, guys. That was my brother that called <laughs> again. Yeah, that was a current, or a cardinal, I'm sorry. R50... R59. It's a good one. It's a good one. You can actually get a three pack that comes with current cardinal and something else is in there. 56. Maybe, maybe 30. I don't know. But either way, look it up. It's like a three pack of red. Okay. So let's move on to the chair. I'm going to do this in warm grays and first with the light coming this way it's going to mean that the skull here let's get that shadowed Okay, there we go. That works. And then the lines that are above and below here. And at this point, I'm just kind of playing with where the shadows lie. In the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. Like us so. Let's take it this way. Just getting that pseudo impression of this chair that he's on. It doesn't need to be anything spectacular. Now we can start going over that again here with some other gray colors and maybe some picking up of the background. So what are you guys thinking for the background? I'm thinking kind of like like some blues and purples back in there. It'll offset this red and kind of, I don't know, just give a weird look to it. Maybe even greens. What are you guys thinking? I almost want it to look like there's various like lights back there that are all bouncing around in different ways.
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, that one. Good call, Jared. That, is that the one that ends with a shotgun wedding? <laughs> I think that's the one that ends with them. Maybe it doesn't end, but they definitely have a shotgun wedding. In like a barn. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, you know what, Lakota, I'll be honest with you. I don't do the whole reflecting colors, and I don't work with that as much as I'd like to. So it's good to always, I don't know, I always find it's good to try new things, and you know what I mean? And just, you know, I, I want to get that look, so it's good, good enough time to practice. I mean, why not, you know? Now I'll erase a little bit here. Okay. And one gray number one to just kind of round this out a bit. Smooth it. There we go. Yeah, I've been watching some tutorials online of people drawing all kind of stuff. And uh, it just it always gets me inspired, you know. It's like, ooh, I need to try that. Color bounce. I need to try that. Leave, leave little white lines for uh, reflections and all kind of fun stuff. All right, so what do you guys think about the background? blue bluish purplish reddish i think i'm gonna do some reddish up here not quite as intense as this but reddish and then blues along the sides there i think that's gonna give a cool look but you guys can let me know what you think hmm <clears throat> Da, da, da. I want to get a good picture of what that big book he reads looks like in the in the TV show. But I can't find it anywhere. That's okay. I don't know if it has anything on the cover. That's just it. Does anybody know off the top of their head that big book he reads on the TV show has anything on it? I can't remember. Oh, well. Candles. Good call. Good call. Hi, Mass Flunky. How are you today? Thank you for joining in. I think the candles is a good idea. And I think the book is like 99% brown. I am doing really well. Thank you for asking. It's always a good day to hang out and draw the Crypt Keeper. So no complaints, you know. I think we're going to use... this what is this here buttercup yellow to start with for the pages of the book because it's not it's not too yellow which i like and again they're real going to be real dirty and disheveled and but we'll get the color thrown in first 
And now let me worry about the book. We're going to start with this Earth 34 and get going. All right, catching up with the chat. Yeah, both Lakota, you and Jared, you both said candles. So I, that's that's perfect. So that's what we're going to do. Um, the yellow-orange there, and then maybe like a, a dark blue in, in certain areas, or even just a, a brown. Ooh, and this guy is running out of juice. <laughs> I have a refill for him, though, so I will do that later. Let's bump it down to sand. Oh, thank you, Mass Flunky. Much appreciated. I, I love it, you know. It's it's very soothing and relaxing to me, so I love doing it. And uh, thank you guys for, you know, joining in and watching. <laughs> And then I want to make it use the ash rose and bits. It's going to darken and gray it a pinch. And then we're going to go with the, hmm, what would be a good one? Tiny bit of this pinkish vanilla. Throw in there. A little, get a little color going on, you know. I'm sorry to hear that, masked flunky. That sucks. And this is actually purple, dull lavender. What I'm going to do with this is use it for the shadows. couple of like splotch areas here and there and when we put in the ink we're gonna have it of course like all ripped up and not looking that good little tears on the cover and stuff like that uh, that's good for now let's get this background going okay so with the candles in the background go with that and then some yellow there lightning yellow Just a little bit of yellow highlights here. Sorry, I was like work focusing on what I was doing. I need to talk. I need to talk to you guys. Okay, there we go. You know what? One here. I can deal with that. Where's my orange here? there too I think it needs there we go 
So these are going to be the candles that are kind of behind him. You can't really see where they're, what they're attached to. But they're definitely there. We're trying this. This is, this is one of those things I do not know how these candles are going to turn out when all is said and done. <laughs> so it's going to be, it's going to be a thing. It's going to be a whole thing. All right. Mauve shadow. We're going to start there. It's pretty light and we can always darken whatever we need later. Okay, I just have to remember too, I'm trying to keep reminding myself not to draw into the hair areas. Well, that wind outside. Again, another Thursday with crazy winds. I have my window shut though, so I'm not going to have to get up and <laughs> go and shut them all like last week. Oh, that was crazy. One of my wife's favorite vases blew over. And uh, she was pretty upset, so that sucks. All right. So then. There we go. All right, coming along, coming along. Okay. So far. <laughs> It has not been ruined. We just got to keep up the not ruining the thing. Keep up without ruining it. Ruining it. Okay. I get nervous sometimes. Especially when I like a drawing I'm doing. You know? Like I'll start to get real nervous when I when I'm doing things and I don't know how they're gonna turn out. There we go. And then some of this ash lavender. This might be a little too something. We're going to we're going to throw it in like I said trying new things. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's really good. <laughs> Dull lavender will help Tune it even more down. And then we're going to go in with some areas of gray back there, too. Ba -ba -ba. How's this going to look? I don't know if I care for that or not. I don't care for that. I don't care for that. Oh, I can't go for that. Exactly, Jared. Exactly. I get that way all the time. You know what, though? In some ways, it's a good feeling because it means that you're you're trying something new, you're, but you're liking what you're doing. If it, if it was just so easy that I'd be like, oh, yeah, I know exactly how this is going to look, boom. Then, I don't know, there'd be, that that would mean I'm not challenging myself. And I definitely like to challenge myself. So 
So some warm grays here. can leave in some lighter areas where their candlelight is coming from. Ugh. Yeah, sometimes I get stressed out about it, but I just got to remind myself to relax and enjoy and have fun with it. Because why else, why, why else do it, man? You got to have fun with what you're doing. Ooh. Okay, I need to massively erase any lines in his white scraggly hair and I can start to shade that a little bit and same with the eyes here and the old dust brush okay so for shading the hair I'm gonna take this pale grape color and Ever he is start as he's casting a shadow on his own hair and same with down in here as remember the lights coming from over here I hope when I'm undead I have such nice long hair as the old crypt keeper All right, and now I'm gonna go in with a, again, I think I'm gonna stick with it, the silk color, it's kind of reddish. And go in this way, because his hair is kind of yellowed, and this has a nice bit of yellow in it, it'll pick up some of the red from his skin. All that fun stuff, that's good. Let's see here. I, Jared, I, you could you could not have hit the hail the nail on the head harder. Hmm. I just drew, and I'm making a video which will hopefully be up uh, next week early, like Monday, hopefully. But uh, I drew twenty twenty five figures in a single drawing so that whole nervous about you know when you're drawing more than one figure and one comes out and you're worried about the second one I had that a lot <laughs> that it was it was crazy but yeah I so I know exactly what you're meaning and then a little more of this silk I really like this for this we're going to make a little shadow here under the eyelid on the eye. Okay, and for now, we are ready for the inking. So let me close up the old marker bin and get my brushes. Yeah, there weren't full figures, but this was probably the most amount of like random stuff I've crammed into a drawing. At least in at least in a while, but I'm happy with how it turned out. I'm really looking forward to coloring cuz I did the pencil drawing, then the inks, and then I'll be doing markers on top here. But uh, I'm really looking forward to showing you guys. I'm really excited about it. But yeah, like I said, keep your eyes peeled for that. I know my video output has been uh, pretty bad. It's just, man, things pile up on you. But uh, no excuses, you know. 
it's it's just time to make a new one so so I did <laughs> so I did hmm I'm going to start up here because I feel like otherwise I'm going to just drag my hand through it today. And that's no good. Just kind of giving it that broken, jabbed look with the stonework. Cool, cool. There we go. <clears throat> and I don't know how I'm going to do the stonework quite as much. I mean, texturing it's going to be one thing with little dashes. I think I'm going to do those with the, the pen. So don't let me forget to texture this stone here. But let me get these outlines in. It's just while I'm doing this, I'm like thinking, hmm. How the heck am I going to do this? It's good times, good times. good excellent ex excellent that might need to be darkened a little later I'm thinking but for now for now I'm okay with it All right, let's get into the Crypt Keeper himself. All right, everybody, sound off. Favorite puppets in horror media. Go. I think Crypt Keeper is a good one. I would have to say all of the puppets from The Thing. I don't want to take any that you guys might have. Favorite puppets in a horror movie. I've got some other picks. I will share with you after you guys give me yours. I want to hear what y'all have to say. So many good ones, too. And I like... There's a point, and I can't... I don't know what you'd call this. It's kind of like a reverse Uncanny Valley. But there's a point when a puppet becomes so horribly bad that it becomes absolutely amazing. Like, I'm just entertained by watching just how lousy this damn puppet is. I think the, the final Ginger Dead Man movies <laughs> definitely fit that bill. Oh, Gary Busey. I wonder if he ever thought that he would be the Ginger Dead Man. Like, when he was just starting out with his career, did he ever think, like, that his dream was to be a homicidal gingerbread man in a crappy B horror movie. I hope that he did. I hope that that was a thing for him. 
where I hope Gary Busey was at his high school voted most likely to play a sentient evil gingerbread man. Because that would be so fitting. So fitting. Gary Busey, though, seems like a cool guy. I don't know. <laughs> Do you guys ever see Point Break? He seems awesome in Point Break. Puppet Master Lakota. Good choice. Yeah, uh, it's. I think his name's Blade. Says one hand is a knife. Hi there, slightly basic. How are you? Glad you could join in. Yeah, sorry, I'm kind of at a weird time. But I am certainly glad you could join in today. We are inking now the Crypt Keeper. And the giant puppet of Mum from Dead Alive. Oh, I know. So good one. Such a, such a good one. Such a good movie. But yeah, you're right. So gross. Nightmare inducing. I mean, it's times like that that you'd be glad you had a lawnmower <laughs> that you could flip up and just ram. Oh, I love Dead Alive. So one of my favorites, do you guys remember the ghoulies? They come out of the toilet. Love the ghoulies. I love how the ghoulies come out of a toilet and the tagline for the movie is, they'll get you in the end. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, let's see here. So now we're starting to get into his hair. I love the critters are cool freaking puppets. Do you guys remember critters? That is a good one. Oh, thanks, Slightly Basic. I'm glad to hear you're doing pretty good. That's awesome. Yeah, this has been a fun one. I I love, uh, I don't know. I love drawing like skeletons and stuff. I think they're, they have so much character to them. It's, it's a blast. Six shooter. Nice. Good picks. Let's get his hairline starting in there. That's good. There was a there's a DVD disc I need to get, and it's all the Puppet Master movies, like nine of them on one collection. I think that's I think that would be a blast. Like just get some buddies, hang out, you know, make some uh, make some pizza, make some pizzas and popcorn and. I don't know, if you drink, have a couple brews or just whatever. Just have like a, a fun Puppet Master, like bad movie evening. That sounds like, a, I don't know, total blast. Total freaking blast. I should host one of those. <laughs> uh, let's get Crypt Keepers absolutely cute little nose in there okay ba -ba -ba. ghoulies critters love it puppet master so good Do you guys remember the sub speaking of full moon pictures? Do you guys remember the subspecies vampire movies? Well, they've recently been putting out a comic book. It's actually pretty good, I gotta say. 
for a comic book about the subspecies? Yeah, I dig it. Like a garden. Okay, let's start filling this in darker. And that's going to be good. Yeah, uh, it was Andre, Jared. It was Andre something. Taloon? Talane? Talon? I'm looking it up for you. Yep, uh, Puppet Master, 1989. Andre Toulon, T-O-U-L-O-N, Toulon. So, slightly basic, this guy is called the Crypt Keeper. And he is from a... A television show from the 90s called Tales from the Crypt. And it was based off an old horror comic book from the 50s called Tales from the Crypt. And so each episode was its own little short horror story. And the Crypt Keeper was the uh, kind of the wise Kraken skeleton. He was a puppet. And at the beginning of each episode, he'd introduce the story, make bad puns and jokes and laugh. Um, very cool. I would definitely recommend uh, Slightly Basic. If you have never seen Tales from the Crypt, the TV show, look up just the, the opening credits on YouTube are some of my favorite, like, opening credit scenes. It, it, you know, like the intro to the show, the opening is so good. The music's great. The atmosphere it's really cool, and it's nothing that's going to, like, chill you to the bone and make you afraid. It's 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 a really fun, I guess. Um, so I would definitely recommend Tales from the Crypt. The opening sequence is amazing. And check that out. And the Crypt Keeper is at the end there, too. So it's it's a good time. Yeah, great theme song to this show. Everything about this show was just pretty cool. But yeah, he was an animatronic. Kind of like uh, like Yoda from Star Wars or, or anything else. And uh, as I, we were talking earlier, he's a really great animatronic. A lot of character, a lot of fun, a lot of personality. I love that for a skeleton, he's not just, like, made of bones, you know? There's, like, I don't know, meat on the bone, as it were. It allows him to have just a ton of cool, just a ton of character. I don't know. Plus, great voice, great laugh. Hello, Grass Carrot. How you doing? Uh, I started this at... 3 o'clock, 3 p.m. exactly. So this is an hour and a half thus far. And I definitely got to be wrapping it up here as I go. Because I have got to drive to Irwin tonight. So, yay. <laughs> North Huntington, actually. but Yeah, so an hour and a half currently for this. And uh, I don't. I think it's been coming along pretty, pretty good. I've I've been having fun drawing this. I have fun with everything, but you know, I just drawing should be fun, and this is. This has been great. Slightly basic. I do. I am on Mixer right now. And I, on Mixer, my handle is mystic underscore Colin. 
So, yep, I am streaming on the YouTubes, uh, Twitch and Mixer simultaneously. And I've really enjoyed Mixer as a platform. Like, I know the low latency thing is, is great for people. That doesn't affect me as much because I'm not doing uh, as games as much as art. But uh, the Mixer community has just been really great. Well, actually, like, every community has been great. But um, Mixer, it seems like it seems like you're easy to find on Mixer, which I like. I like that a lot. So it's it's been great. Hi, Weird Monster 23. Slightly basic <laughs> from the YouTubes. Lakota on the mixer, right on. Yeah, it's just it's a nice streaming platform. I think it's it's easy to use, it's straightforward. I like watching people on it. So mixer's been pretty good. No complaints. Yeah, with with me on Mixer, there might be a little more latency than with some gamers because I'm outputting to three places at once. But uh, yeah, hopefully it should be work pretty good for you guys. Ah, uh, pardon me. Yeah, I need to change that. Actually, I, I'm like the quote unquote the branding. For me is all over the place because I'm on Twitch as Colin Richards art so it, yeah it's just it's one of those things when I kind of started building a channel I had no idea what I was doing on YouTube and uh, when I signed into Mixer it just used my like Xbox Live ID. I had no choice. It just is like, here's your thing. And I was like, okay, I have to go live in 10 minutes, so I might as well use it. So, but I, I think I could change the mixer name. I just haven't yet. All right, get these bony old fingers put in. I don't want the Crypt Keeper to, like, poke me. Like, his fingers seem so bony and gross. Ugh. <clears throat> nice, weird monster. <laughs> it's just one of those things that... I didn't... I'm not... I don't know. It's it's. I know some people, like, I've read tips and stuff, and people are like... You're setting out to be a star. You need to get all this stuff in line. I'm like, I'm not here to be a a star. Like, that's not the point. The point is to hang out and, like, have fun and, you know, and just enjoy and just hang out with people and talk and share my art. Like, the whole, that whole, like, being very cognizant of, like, you're creating a brand right from the start before you do anything on YouTube. I, I don't know. I that's just not me. You know, if a brand happens to pop up, if, if people like my stuff, great, but I'm not going to make all these decisions right off the bat. That's keyed toward becoming a sensation because I, I don't know. I think that's a doomed to failure mentality in a way, but anyway, I digress. I'm like going on a rant here. I don't like rants. I do like rants. Hi couch monsters. How are you? Thank you very much. Okay, so let's get these pages in. I want to make them look all like disheveled and... Make it look kind of grody in that book. back cover here and you know what I'm going to add in I'm going to use the, the pen on that now that I'm thinking about it 
tell me about it. But if my problem is I tend to start and not stop, which is no good. <laughs> Ask my wife what she thinks about when I start talking about Star Wars. When it's like 45 minutes later and she hasn't listened to a word I said but tunes in to catch. And that's why I think Mace Windu was the least effective Jedi in Jedi history or something like that. Yeah, I don't tend to stop. And that's why The Last Jedi was entertainingly bad. But good times, good times. Yeah, I hear you, Lakota. There's there's people out there that, you know, they're like, oh, your channel should have like a thousand a thousand um, subscribers in a month. And if you don't get that, like you might as well just quit and start a new channel. And it's like, that's ridiculous. That's not, that's not the point. My YouTube channel, I'm so happy that I have 200 now and that, and that's been years. And I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but I don't know. For me, it's like, that's not the, the point just to get them subs, you know? But it's nice. It's nice. It's nice when you do get them. So I, I appreciate every subscriber and but just that mentality of, you know, what you're doing should be this should be that. It's like, no, it's going to be its own sweet little thing filled with drawings and fun. Lakota, I need to get on and catch you streaming sometime. I will. I will admit. I'm. I'm. I believe I'm subbed to you on Mixer, but I have not hopped. I've not been on at a time when you've been uh, streaming. Unfortunately, I need to rectify that. Let's give him some neck funk. hair is coming along I don't want to do every individual strand but just enough to let you know there's a whole gang of hair there <clears throat> pardon me Good stuff, man. Yeah, if you stream at a specific time, like if you're like, oh, I do every week at this time, let me know. Because I will, I will try to jump on if I am available. But yeah, I need to, I need to watch more streams too is the thing. Um, I want to see other people doing art and stuff on streams. Definitely got to get more into that. But I digress. Okay, so the next step is going to be this background. And once again, I'm feeling the nervousness. Yay. So excited. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so I think I'm going to do some texturing on the book with pen. And on that chair, Monday. Okay, I'm going to have to remember that for, if you stream on Monday, I'm going to remember that for this upcoming. Uh, hopefully, I'll check it out. We're going to make the book, like, pockmarked and kind of ripped up. some texture here and there I think that's gonna be a good look here hang on hello 
Hey, I'm I am finishing up my stream here. Can I call you in a couple minutes? Yep. I'll s I was gonna pick you up at five anyway. I love you. Bye. Sorry about that. My phone is blowing up today, you guys. Alright. Some rips and tears and little areas that are just like nasty. Give a good texture to it. <clears throat> yeah, because you want to get it done. Well, I, I have to, I'll be having to run here in a few minutes. Like I said, I got to drive to North Huntington tonight. And all the fun shenanigans. But I think I can get this sucker done before then. And I should have some nice mats coming in so I can frame these up and get them on display because my first show of the year will be not this upcoming weekend, but next weekend at the Three Rivers Comic Book Convention. And that is in Pittsburgh at Century 3 Mall. So definitely check it out, Three Rivers Comic Con. It's a good time. It's uh, very cheap to get in. They got some, they, It's less celebrity driven and more like actual comic book creators and stuff like that. And I will be vending my wares. It's a great show. Good times. And I enjoy it. Hi Woody the Wizard. Thank you very much. He is coming along nicely. Just going to do some errant texture here on the. Stone, whatchamacallit, behind him, chair. Doesn't need to be much, but just some like cracks, lines that go a long way. Yeah, I'm very happy with how this is turning out. It's, it's, it's good. It's good. There we go. And then as far as this background goes, I'm not going to ink it in because I don't want it to come out even more, but I am going to do some little... white dots here where the tips of the candles would be. Hopefully that's coming through, but that's, you can tell what it is. And then here and there, a couple of little lines and stuff like that I think will be good. Now we can add in some dashes here. I'm going to take a very super fine pen. I'm going to use my 0 .03 I think. The smallest one I have and that will be able to give him an outline on the eye. go and a couple of boom 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 right in there let's make some of these kind of spilling over yeah this nasty white grave hair oh no <laughs> everywhere crypt keeper man you gotta you gotta comb and wash that every day
All right, good. I wanted to make sure it looked like candles and not just like, I don't know what. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, let me sign it up. Sometimes I forget to do that. Uh, we'll sign it right in here. Colin 18. Boom, shaka laka, shaka boom, you guys. I can't believe it's 2018 already. Man, what a crazy life it has been. Well, I had a blast drawing this one, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining in and uh, hanging out with me on a Thursday. Thank you, Jared. Thank you. Much obliged. So next week is the week before uh, Three Rivers Comic Con. So maybe we'll do some comic book stuff. Maybe some other horror stuff. I don't know. But until then, thanks, you guys. If you haven't already, please uh, su subscribe if you want. Like, share, all that kind of fun stuff. And uh, cheers, everybody. We'll see you on the next one. Have a great weekend. Bye.